So let's run a simulation in Packet Tracer. I'll go to simulation mode. Here's the console of router one and I'll log in with my username David, password Cisco. Notice I'm logging into the console of the router, but a TCP packet is generated and is sent to the AAA server. Inbound PDU received by the server has a source of the router. Destination is the AAA server. Port number is 49. So this is a TACAX TCP packet. Packet goes back. A TACAX packet is now sent to the TACAX server. So if I click on that, notice the inbound PDU shows us that the source of the packet is the router. Destination is the TACAX server. Scrolling down, in the TCP header, we can see that the destination is port 49. This is a TACAX packet. Notice data is encrypted. TACAX encrypts the data between the router and the server. But there we can see clearly that it's a TACAX packet going to the TACAX server. The AAA server is sending back a TACAX packet to the router. So the source is the TACAX server or AAA server. Destination is the router. We can see the TCP source port is 49 going to the ephemeral or random port number on the router. We can see it's a TACAX packet. So the packet gets sent back to the router. That process will continue until authentication has been completed. Notice here we're seeing spanning tree messages. But at this point, I've now logged into the router. If I type enable, more TCP and TACAX packets are now generated. Some other messages have been generated by the switch. I'll go through those quickly. I'll restart that simulation. So, so I'll try that again, enable. Notice as soon as I typed enable, TACAX packets are generated. Username is gonna be David, password is gonna be Cisco. As soon as I enter that, notice we can see TACAX packets being sent between the router and the TACAX server. So again, inbound PDU on the switch. Source IP address is the router. Destination is the TACAX server. TCP port is port 49. TACAX protocol data is encrypted. And that will continue until authentication has completed. And notice I can get into enable mode on the router. So that was simulation mode with TACAX. Let's have a look at radius. So I'll go back to simulation mode on router two, connect it to the console and log in as Peter Pan. Notice a radius packet is generated. Inbound PDU on the switch. Source IP address is router two, destination IP address is the AAA server. Notice this is using UDP. Destination port is 1645. So it's not TCP, it's UDP. Radius uses UDP, not TCP. Notice the destination port is 1645. That is the default. So we can see radius packets being generated between the router and the server. And notice I've logged in. Type enable. Capture forward, we've got radius packets being generated again. Put my username and password in. Radius packets are being generated. And notice I've logged in. So again, show run, pipe include triple A include radius. Notice the authentication port used by default in radius is 1645. So that's why when I type exit and log back in with my username and password, 
the destination port number used in the packet is 1645. This is a UDP packet. So let's have a look at this packet. This was the reply from the AAA server. Data is shown in clear text. It's not encrypted. Source and destination port number. This is a reply from the server to the router. So there you go. We've proven that when you log in to a device, we can see the TACX and RADIUS messages between the devices and the RADIUS and TACX server or AAA server. So how did you do in this lab? Were you able to complete the lab? Did you get it working? Do you understand the differences between RADIUS and TACX? Make sure that you understand the theory of both RADIUS and TACX. But I'm hoping that this lab has helped you understand the concepts and implementation of both TACX and RADIUS.